Joining us in studio now is award-winning broadcaster, speaker, and author, Shannon Skinner. Welcome, Shannon. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Now, you spend a lot of time speaking uh, around essentially the things that women or people need to do to be happy and successful. And you say that there's one thing women should do and two things they absolutely should not. Oh, I want to (laughs) know. Let's take it away because we want to know. What's the secret? The secret really is to believe in yourself. And I've had the honor and pleasure of interviewing hundreds of women for my my television show, Extraordinary Women TV, and other projects for my radio show, Shannon Skinner Live. Um, And something that comes up consistently in, in my line of questioning, which is getting to the heart of women, is believing in yourself. It's pretty tough to go far in life unless we, we can believe that we can, can get there. So believing in yourself is really the number one thing. So you're talking about maybe ignoring the negative chatter that goes on in your head about maybe I shouldn't be doing this or maybe I can't do this and just going for it? Self-doubt comes up, mm-hmm. and that's the killer of creativity. So mm-hmm. yes, uh, but when we have the tools and when we know what's important to us, when we listen to our heart and we um, build our self-worth, then we can believe in ourselves. Because what happens is we've got a, uh, our own internal chatter. We've got that whisper of our heart that tells us, that knows what our, our heart's desires are. And when we go into self-doubt, the heart closes down and we can't hear the whispering. Mm. So what are the things that we definitely shouldn't do, the two things? Well, we have a very big focus on celebrity in Mm -hmm. our culture. And, you know, we've got TIFF coming up. Uh, What happens, and I think in North America more than anywhere else in the world, uh, is that we start uh, aspiring to be celebrities. And we, what happens is that that's really an illusion. You know, we are aspiring to an illusion. So we're actually trying to live someone else's life, and we're not living our own. Do you think social media has a lot to do with that? Because I know that I go on Instagram, and I look at people, and I feel sorry for myself because I think, wow, they have this great life, and I'm bored. Like, I'm sitting at a computer working, and I'm not doing any of those things. It's only taken them 27 times to get that perfect shot. You know? Well, you know, you know what yeah. I mean, though. I mean, and they talk there is an actual syndrome about that, about you should stay off social media because this is all staged. Not well, all, but... Social media, I think, is is uh, does make it worse, but it's not the problem. It, social media is really a medium. What really the problem is, is that we're not looking into our own lives and what's important to us, and we're projecting onto celebrities. They look like they've got great lives, um, and the grass is always greener on the other side, but we're looking at fantasies. So let me ask you, when you talk about self-worth, and we've heard this before, that mm-hmm. women look at a job application and say, I only have eight qualifications, I, I, I won't, I'm not applying. Men look at it and say, oh, I've got, I've got two of those, I'm good to go, I'm going to get this one. Is, it, is there a difference between men and women, and is there a difference between women of different ages? So are millennials a little more self-aware or, self, or more secure? I think it just depends on um, how much education we've had, life experience and wisdom. Uh, wisdom comes into play. Um, you know, are men and women different in their self-worth? Um, somebody once described it to me as uh, an analogy in that when you have a little boy and a little girl growing up, the little boy is encouraged to climb the tree. But when the little girl um, wants to climb the tree, um, suddenly she's stopped because she might hurt herself. Uh, and this is kind of how our generation has grown up. Um, women will tend to listen to their hearts more and can open it up and then find their worth from inside uh, from that standpoint. But there is a tendency for men in business to be able just to jump in uh, and not care what people say. So and is that the second thing that you say that women don't need and that's to behave like a man when it comes to the business world? To be- behave like a man and feel that they need approval. Mm-hmm. And this comes up a lot. You know, we, we feel like we need approval from others to follow our dreams or to be successful. Uh, in business, um, women uh, have traditionally, uh, we've, we see women more and more acting like men in business uh, when, in fact, we don't need to. 
there's a, a growing movement, and we do see this on social media. Women are saying we don't want to act like men in business. We want to just be who we are. Which is more collaborative. Collaborative. Overall. Women tend to help lift each other. And, and, and that's contrary to what popular opinion is. You right. know, you quote the B word, like, well, women, you know, will be more nasty to right. each other that way because they're envious. But in our experience, it's quite the reverse. Mm -hmm. Collaborative, caring, nurturing. Um, you know, and that's not to say that, you know, women have to be, you know, really super emotional in business either, mm -hmm. but it's caring uh, and nurturing our employees and relationships. Um, you know, traditionally business has been very paternalistic, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that is the other thing is that I, I hear this a lot from the women I've interviewed. I see it in my own life and experienced it myself in that we, we can just be women in business and we don't need approval from someone else. And we, actually, we have to really stop caring what people think about what we say and do. Uh, especially in business, we have to make tough decisions and often women will step back and not be afraid about making those decisions because they're concerned what somebody else might think or say. That holds us back. Well, you also say that some of these things hold back our creativity. What do you mm -hmm. mean by that? Well, you know, when we're not listening to our, our own intuition and our own in, inner voice, uh, we are holding back our own genius. So, again, we're, we're either living somebody else's life or we are in a fantasy. But uh, true creativity starts with an idea in order to be able to share that with the world, that idea or the end result, whether it's writing a book, whether it is creating a show, whether it is a film, um, it takes self-worth to be able to share that with the world. Okay, I want to talk to you about a point you wrote down here. And you talked about that, you know, there's a growing controversy about the burqa in the West. But you want women to take another look at why we wear high heels. We wear high heels a lot. So is it empowering or disempowering us? What's your take? I say it's both. Because some women, if they want to feel sexy mm -hmm. and they want to feel empowered sexually, mm -hmm. wearing high heels, they do. I mean, for a short time until your feet start to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> right? But look at Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. You know, she's... Flats and pants. Yeah, and she wears sensible shoes. She has to. She's on stage. She's running around. She has other things to think about than looking sexy. Mm -hmm. So I turned 50 this year, and I started to ask myself, why am I wearing shoes that make me suffer all the time? And the truth is, I don't need to. Not all the time. It's nice to wear a nice dress and nice pair of shoes when you're going to a cocktail party, but you can only wear them for about half an hour. I have shoes I only wear in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, TMI. <laughs> so I think you know we, you know, high heel shoes. I've I think we we need to take a, another look at at this. It goes into the same cap as why do we wear makeup all the time? Mm. Uh, instead of focusing on yeah, but just that, a lot of that, mm. that's interesting because mm. I um, grew up in, in England and Australia, and women don't wear makeup as much there mm. as they do as they do here. So I find when I go back and visit and go to other places, and, I mean in Australia you only really wear makeup makeup if you're going out to a major event. Right. In fact, there was a, an interesting article, and I think it was in the Telegraph, uh, not that long ago, about the difference between British women and French women, mm -hmm. and where they put their money in terms of cosmetics and makeup. And British women put a lot more money into makeup over skincare, and French women put a lot more money into skincare versus makeup. Uh, that's very interesting. I think we 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 do wear a lot of makeup here because again we are very celebrity culture uh, focused. Mm -hmm. in terms How of can culture. women connect with you and find out more about you know your, your story and? They, they can go to my website at shannonskinner.com, uh, email me at shannon at shannonskinner.com, tweet to me, shannon underscore Skinner. And also you are um, booked for a lot of speaking engagements. Mm -hmm. You were in India, you're going back to all over the place. So people can book you through that website? Yes, absolutely. They can book me through uh, shannonskinner.com. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. After the break, as we love to do every show, we introduce you to another up-and-coming musical talent, singer-songwriter Jenna Bennett from Ajax, Ontario. This is what she said. Stay with us. She might just change.